Hi everyone, Walter Bound here. Little tutorial on writing effective sentences. All right, most of you out there, you need to improve your writing. Uh, if you watch this, uh, you learn the different types of sentences and you vary your sentence structure, you'll be writing a lot better. All right, so it takes a lot of practice, like with anything, whether it's soccer, baseball, guitar, piano, writing takes practice. The more you do, the better you get. All right, so let's start with the basics, all right, the loose sentence. Here's an example. Walter laughed. Walter is the noun. Laughed is the verb, right? This is past tense. Walter laughed. Present tense would, of course, be Walter laughs. It's happening presently. Those are the only two requirements to make a sentence. You need a noun and you need a verb. If your teacher says or someone says you're using a fragment, that means it's not a complete sentence. That could be another lesson where you use intentional fragments, but let's let's worry about that another time. All right, the noun is the subject of the sentence. Verb is the action of the subject. What is the subject doing? All right, Walter, or state of being, all right, like to be verbs. When the subject and verb appear at the beginning of a sentence, it's considered a simple sentence. All right, well, let's, let me change that to um, a simple or loose sentence. I'll even call that loose. Any sentences that you write follow this basic formula. It's how we started reading and speaking, like, I want ice cream, or me want soda, or even I do it, right? It's not correct grammar, but we begin with the id, right? Selfish wants. I first, subject first, right? I want this, I want this, right? Now, we can add to this basic structure, right? What did Walter laugh at? What was he doing while he laughed, right? So Walter laughed at the clowns while he was bunching popcorn at the circus. Here I've added two prepositional phrases, at the circus, or at the clowns, at the circus, with the conjunction while, right? Conjunctions are words that connect words, phrases, and clauses, and sentences, uh, conjunctions, uh, co-join, uh, to join, to unite. A prepositional phrase, here and here, a modifying phrase consisting of a preposition, at, and the object, clowns, or circus, okay? Now, let's move on to periodic sentences. Number two, the main subject and verb are withheld until the end of the sentence. Like, here's one. While he was munching popcorn at the circus, comma, Walter laughed at the clowns. Parts of speech can be moved around to create variety. They're like puzzle pieces. You can shift them around. The sentence above contains a dependent clause. That means it cannot stand by itself. If you put a period at the end of circus, it becomes a fragment, okay? So when you pause there, and generally when you read something out loud and you pause, put a comma. Think of this as a support system, a flying buttress that supports a main wall. So you have the main wall, and it can stand by itself. It doesn't need support, but you can add dependent clauses against that main wall at the beginning and at the end or on the side. And you can, you can string dependent clauses together as long as that main subject and verb, that main sentence, that, that independent clause is, is strong enough. It would be weird to write this. While he was munching popcorn at the circus at the clowns, Walter laughed. That's just weird. We, you wouldn't, that doesn't make any sense, really. Or at the clowns while he was munching popcorn at the circus, Walter laughed. That's just very strange. This could work, however. Walter, comma, while munching popcorn at the circus, comma, laughed at the clowns. I was able to take out the pronoun he and added a non-restrictive clause, which is right here, right? That could be taken out and the sentence could make sense. But when you have a non-restrictive clause, you need a comma here and you have a comma here. Sometimes you guys might just add one comma, or you add a comma here, but you need you need both you need two commas here. Commas oftentimes travel together in pairs. I'll go over restrictive clauses during another lesson. That means there's no commas, but that's we'll have to get into that. Here's another example. Periodic sentences create drama and suspense because the reader does not know what is going to happen. Here's an example. As the wind whistled and the rain pounded the windows, 
with the skies gray and foreboding, without a trace of hope in the heavens, Walter picked his nose. Okay. The reader expects something to happen that's more in keeping with the tone of the dependent clauses, whistling, pounding, gray skies, foreboding, there's no hope, right? Uh, I'm expecting death or something to happen or some uh, thing bad, but picking, picking nose, okay, it's ironic. It's not what we expect. This sentence should not be as funny if it is funny without the subject first. Like Walter picked his nose as the wind whistled. This is still grammatically correct. It's just not as effective. Humor works on the unexpected. You have one, you have two, maybe three, and then four is the joke. All right. To write effective periodic sentences, the punctuation must be perfect and understandable to the reader. So because I'm using commas here effectively, here and here and here, the sentence makes sense. But if you did not have those commas, then there's some other problems. We just get very confused as to what's happening. All right, let's move to our third type of sentence, which is subordination. Writing, great writing requires balance and symmetry. Artists know this and writers are artists. We arrange words on the page to create order and meaning. Photographers and painters know this. Where does the eye go when viewing the photo, right? The vanishing line and all those things. Where is the emphasis in my sentence, right? So just like the eye in a photo, what, where do you want my eye to go to, right? Oftentimes writers place the most emphatic word in the middle of a sentence or at the beginning. And this is oftentimes a mistake. Think of a sentence as a unit. The strongest beat, the strongest word, what you want stressed, like right there, should be at the end, all right? So stressed and end come at the end of my clause there. All right, here's an example. When I was only 10 years old, I wrote my first novel, All right? So what's intriguing about this? Subordin subordination creates two parts of a sentence, A and B, usually with a comma, sometimes with like a semicolon, um, things like that, or maybe like a however or a therefore in the middle. But when I was only 10 years old as part A, I wrote my first novel as part B. What is most interesting part of the sentence? Well, I think writing a novel at 10 seems pretty cool, right? It's unusual. So the sentence should emphasize that. I wrote my first novel and I was only 10 years old. Both ways are grammatically correct. The secret is to vary the sentence structure, like a musician that varies the notes and chords on the staff. You just don't play middle C all the time. Oftentimes, students pick a sentence structure that they're comfortable with, and they stick to it. And man, it is trouble reading that thing. All right, especially if you keep writing with coordinated conjunctions at the beginning of your sentence, which we'll get to in another lesson. All right, let's take a look at number four, right? Dramatically short sentences. Beginning writers often do not know when to stop. They add more information to an already fine sentence and they not want to end and they keep going on because it seems so weird to stop and the point gets lost in all the words and clauses and we lose sight of the emphasis and subject, just like that last sentence. The problem too comes from a lack of proper punctuation. Students may see a sentence like the one above and say it's a run-on. It's not. A run-on sentence is when two independent clauses are written together like this. I love to play baseball. I love to play volleyball, right? Where's the punctuation there? There is none, right? Except at the end, and that's fine, but there's a problem in the middle. Or a comma splice, holding two independent clauses together with a mere comma. I love to play baseball. I love to play volleyball. This could be rewritten as subordination. Even though I play baseball, I really love volleyball, or vice versa, depending on the writer. Or coordination. If they're e equal, I love to play baseball and volleyball. Or even this. I play baseball, period. I play volleyball. This would also work, right, the semicolon. But I don't like the semicolon there as much. I like a semicolon when this part adds emphasis or adds more additional to this, I play baseball, and then you're talking more about baseball, right? But because you're coming to another idea, I wouldn't use a semicolon. Or you can do Yoda style, baseball and volleyball to play I love. That's just weird and it usually only works with Yoda, all right? All right, let's take a look at dramatically short sentences, get back to this. Dramatically short sentences vary the sentence structure. Look at this, I had this long line, 
And then I have this short sentence, boom. And then I have another long sentence, all right? What does the eye focus on? Well, the eye focuses on this. This is what we see, right? The short line in the middle. If you put words in there, boom, emphasis, and it draws attention to itself. Now look at this. This Here's another long sentence, and these are fine as long as it's punctuated properly. And then boom, 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 one, two, three, all right? Or you can do four. I mean, there's no, there's no, you know, model. There's no like, this is how you have to do. It's just learning how to use these different devices to create balance and interest in your writing. The last three parts are dramatically short. It adds drama and emphasis and allows the reader to rest and find meaning. All right, here's an example with words, not just lines. After a long trip home, driving through a snowstorm and low on gas, with temperatures dropping to below zero, I found shelter at a local diner. Oop, edit. <laughs> That's dinner. It was warm. The coffee was hot. The meatloaf was delicious. I used a periodic sentence at the beginning because I found is the subject. All right. What did you find? I found shelter. Prepositional phrase. All right. At a local diner. And then I ended with three dramatically short sentences. It was warm. The coffee was hot. The meatloaf was delicious. Those, to remember from the beginning, are loose sentences, all right? They're also dramatically short, right? Um, it also starts with, it was. Um, it was warm, the coffee was hot, the meatloaf was delicious. So the, I'm gonna get rid of this anaphora because it's not really an anaphora. I'm jumping, I'm jumping the gun here, right? Um, but it's parallel, all right? Because it was, the coffee was hot, meatloaf was delicious. I could write this was like this, I found, um, it was warm, and the coffee was hot, and the meatloaf was delicious. All right, I could do it like that too. All right, and there's some uh, crazy thing called poly I'm probably not uh, spelling that right. Yeah, I think I did. Oop, nope. There we go. Okay. Uh, where you don't use any commas. All right, it's it's addition. Again, another lecture. Hello, scholars. Welcome back. Uh, let's talk about coordination. All right, coordination means like break it down to coordinate. Um, all things are equal. One part is not greater or lesser than another part. So if you were to write, I play basketball, volleyball, and golf, you need commas there, right? Um, they're all equal. Basketball, volleyball, golf. If they weren't, well, then you'd have to change the sentence. You can do something like this. I play basketball and volleyball and golf. Again, they're all coordinated. It's all equally balanced, all right? Here's another sentence right here. I have three errands to do after school. Go to the post office, run to Target, and race to my boyfriend. We have three verbs that are balanced. Go, run, and race, all right? Um, I put probably the most important one here at the end because the boyfriend is more important, hopefully, than the post office and target, right? Go, run, and of course, race is better, right? You're racing to your boyfriend. Um, we have three nouns that are balanced, right? We have post office, target, and of course, boyfriend, right? If you want to be more concrete, my boyfriend, Ted, or my boyfriend, uh, um, John, okay? Uh, we have a list of things after a independent clause, right? This one right here, is a complete sentence. It's not a sentence, so we do not use a semicolon. Uh, we use a colon, all right? So right here, that is not a sentence. If it was, we'd use a semicolon, all right? It's essential that you use an article like the before a noun, and if you ever wonder if a word is a noun or not, place the in front of it. That doesn't really work for the Walter, except if it's funny, like the Walter told me, all right? That's kind of funny. I That's maybe not that funny, but anyway. I not only need to study for my math exam, but also for my English final. Again, it has to be coordinated or in a way balanced, all right? Think of this, you know, this gets into parallel structure, but that's the fulcrum, all right? This is, think of this as a teeter-totter, all right? Uh, this is like 50%, this is 100 pounds here and 100 pounds here. It has to be equal, all right? If this is the fulcrum, you want it to be balanced. The pronoun my needs to be used both times to keep it coordinated and balanced. Exam and final are also balanced at the end. 
All right, here's the word exam balanced with the word final, right? Different words, pretty much the same thing. You use a comma before a coordinating conjunction, all right? So that is no, that is yes, that is no, that is also no, that's a yes. This would also work, but not as, I not only need to study from a math exam, but I also need to say it's just too much. It's okay, but if you have um, right, the coordinated conjunction there, you need that comma. All right, the famous coordinated conjunctions of the fanboys, you probably remembered that back in elementary school, or conjunction, junction, what's your function, right? And uh, forward and nor, but yet so. This is something you guys do all the time. You begin every sentence with but, blah, 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 or and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. But sometimes I see like, but beginning sentences seven, eight, nine times, sometimes in a paragraph. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Just guys, don't do that. Informal writing, you can get away with that a little bit, but formal writing, definitely not. All right. Coordination is a, important when writing. For example, I need to study, read, and also I have to do chores. This is not balanced, right? This is one, this is one, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words, okay? It's not balanced, all right? If this is the fulcrum here, and this is like a teeter-totter, this has too much weight. Study, read, and complete chores is better. A verb for chores would be ideal, right? Okay, let me fix. Nope. Dyslexia comes out sometimes, okay? Walter eyed the cardinal in the tree, focused his lens on the red feathers, and clicked the perfect shot. All right, that sentence is coordinated. Eyed, focused, and clicked are all the same type of verb. They're also balanced with the proper length of prepar prepositional phrase, like in the tree, on the red feathers, the perfect shot. Well, that's not a, that's not a prepositional phrase, but it still works because it's it's coordinated, all right? All right, let's get to the next one, rhetorical question, all right? This one should all be familiar to you because you're told to write a rhetorical question at the beginning of a paper. And so I get things like this. These are all horrible. What does love mean to you? How does the dictionary define love? Have you ever thought of the meaning of life? All right, these are awful, all right? I could go over why they're awful. They're platitudes, they're meaningless. You're just writing it to write something. You don't really have a reason for it, okay? They're all questions, but they're horrible. A good one from Isaac Asimov is, what is intelligence anyway? This is from an essay called, What is Intelligence? Then he writes a narrative essay about the various types of intelligence, comparing himself to his car mechanic. It's an effective book, right? Because what is intelligence anyway? All right, it's very informal. I'm like, I, okay, let's let's go over this. Also, you can raise a series of rhetorical questions throughout an essay. A series of three can work well, although you can go more. Why do students sit in rows? Why do we still jump at the bell and factory workers? Why must we raise our hands like obedient children? All right, this could be an effective opening to an essay about comparing children to factory workers, students from the 19th century and why schools haven't changed. When you read great essays, you see these types of questions all the time. Martin Luther King does it in Letter from Birmingham Jail, and it's just an effective tool to draw the reader into the dialogue. But it needs to be strategic and not formulaic. It should not be cookie cutter. What, is love mean, what does love mean to you? That's a bit cookie cutter. Raise, raise questions to ponder and some questions to answer. Raise questions and then answer them with a fine solution. Get the reader to agree with you. All right, let's talk about parallel structure. I'm going to have another lecture going over the various types of parallel structure, but things like this. Of the people, by the people, and for the people, that's parallel structure, right? It's also epistrophe. But I'll tell you with that, with the re repetition of the last word here, okay? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Okay? 
times times this is antithesis okay another type of parallel structure uh one small step for man one giant leap for mankind okay that's also parallel structure right there's so many ways to write parallel structure um here's one i use all the time my wife and i have one thing in common we're both in love with me ha 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 lol okay um when you learn to write in parallel structure um and it, this is coordination it's coordinated but it takes it to the next level all right uh where you begin an essay you begin a sentence with the word water and then you end the sentence with the same letter or the same word well water all right um again i have a lecture going over the greek models 12 13 different types including a epistrophe here and an aphra but that's for another lecture this is already long enough um these are the various types of sentences of course we'll get into like declarative sentences and imperative sentences but that's another lecture as well thank you for watching uh take care scholars bye-bye